here today for Lawn Fawn and welcome back to the channel. Today I have a card to share with you all using the Magic Picture Changer dies. So I really love this die. I think it's so unique and I love the way um, it works. I just think it's so incredible. But I really had in mind to create some mini Polaroid cards this week. I love mini cards. Um, just because they're really perfect for gifts and for lunch boxes and just for anything really and so I really wanted to make some of those but I wanted to make them a little bit more interesting so I decided to pair it with the magic picture changer dies and create sort of like a developing Polaroid look. I'm not really sure if that came through and whether it's just a little bit too over the top and maybe a little too whimsical but I really still like the effect in the end um, and I do think it is pretty fun and a little bit of a different way to use this die um, even though the like original use for this die is incredible and I absolutely love it. I just love stretching dies a little bit more and making them a little bit different. So I'm starting off with die cutting out all of the elements that I need for the magic picture changer um, design of the card. So I'm going to be cutting out this main piece which is the larger piece to the left here and originally you would stamp your image and cut that out of like white or whatever but I decided to cut it out of black and that's because when you take a picture with a Polaroid it's usually like a dark blue color or something or sometimes even white I believe but I thought that black sort of just worked better in this case so I decided to die cut it out of black and then also cutting out this piece here this is the frame piece and this is from the add-on section of the die and I just wanted the more full frame not those tiny little frames so that's why I'm using the add-on piece as well and then from the original set um, there's this little like pull tab piece with the arrow I'm going to be cutting that out of some yellow cardstock this is sunflower cardstock and then I'll be pulling out some just plain white cardstock for the pull tab um, piece that you can see on the right. But I will cut that out later once I've stamped and colored my scene. So to make this card look more in the shape of a Polaroid, I'm taking this piece from the add-on die set and I'm going to extend this die just a little bit. So I'm going to be running this through a die cutting machine and you can see here that when I'm layering over my plates, I'm not layering them over completely. I'm leaving a little bit of the bottom half of the die um, out from under the plates and this means it's just not going to cut. So you can see here on the back it didn't cut all the way through because the plates weren't applying pressure to that bottom half. So now what I'm going to do is take the same die, I'm going to remove that centerpiece so I can see through and I'm just going to jiggle that die around until it sort of fits into the grooves of where the die die cut before and I'm just going to pull it downwards a little bit so you can see here that it's extending the die and it's making it longer. I'm just adhering that into place and then I'm just going to run through the part that we didn't run through before back through my die cutting machine and you can see here that when I pull it out of the die cutting machine it's actually made that piece longer and it's extended it. So what I really like about this is it's just made this um, shape more like a Polaroid as it's always bigger on the bottom and I just really like the way this looks. This doesn't alter the way that the magic picture changer die works because that center little die cut hole is still the same size but the bottom half is just a little longer which I really like and it's just altering it just a little bit to make it fit my design a little bit more. So now that all of my pieces are die cut and ready to go, I'm going to go ahead and just stamp a little scene on this white cardstock. So I first just traced around the die just to sort of get the sizing that I knew I wanted. Even though the little opening isn't this large, it sort of made me um, aware of where I could place my images. So I just went ahead and used the Butterfly Kisses stamp set and laid down a couple of the clouds and a few of the butterflies around. And then I also went ahead and stamped that on some masking paper or you can use full sticky post-it notes, whatever you like. And I just stamped them on there and then cut them out with some scissors right along the black line so there's no um, white border. But of course, if you wanted to miss the fussy cutting step, you could definitely um, 
cut these out with the border um, that would be fine as well it would just give it a little bit of a different effect so once I've stamped the images down and I've covered them over with the masks I am just going to use some distress ink which is in tumbled glass and I'm just going to ink blend over the entire background I am making sure to use a little bit of washi tape just at the top of the panel just to make sure that that piece stays white and that's going to be the little pull tab piece and I just really wanted to make sure that stayed white so that's why I did the masking there and so I'm just ink blending over this entire piece just really lightly all over those masks and that's why I needed to mask those images off because I was going to do some ink blending over the top. So now that I've finished ink blending over the entire scene I am just going to go ahead and now remove all of the washi tape and also all of the masks off of the images. I am going to save these masks for a future card if I ever need them just by placing them on the back of the stamp set since they can be reused a couple more times. So now it's time to colour in my little scene. So I am going to be using Copic markers. They're just my favourite. So I'm going to start off with colouring this little fox first. I'm using E09, E07, E97 and E95. Honestly, probably my favourite combination of the foxes. I just love the high contrast between all of the colours. For the clouds, I'm just adding a little bit of blue shading onto them. For the white areas of the fox and also the net, I'm just using a few light warm greys. For the little handle of the net, I'm using some E40s. And then I'm going to be using some pinks, so R000 and R20 for his little cheeks and also in the insides of his ears. And then for the butterfly, I'm just using some RVs. Once I finish colouring in all of my images, I'm just going to go ahead and die cut this panel using the other piece of the Magic Picture Changer dies. So I'm just going to line that up over top. You can see all the way through with those openings, which is really nice to get your scene lined up perfectly. So I'm just going to line it up and then I'm going to run it through a die cutting machine. So now that all of my pieces are die cut out, it's time to assemble them all. So I've got my main black piece here and I'm just going to go ahead and fold along all of the pre-scored score lines that the die creates. So I just have my bone folder here and I'm just folding along all of the edges and scoring them down really well. So I'm just folding it in half first and then I'm folding inside the little flaps as well. So just folding them towards me to the inside of the die. I am making sure that I fold them really, really well and also using the bone folder to get a good crease just so there's no cracking or anything like that of the cardstock. So once I fold them over a little bit with my fingers, I'm just reinforcing that with my bone folder. Once I go ahead and um, score over all of these lines, I am going to take some 1 8 of an inch adhesive and I'm just going to add pieces on the outside of the flaps and also on the inside of the flaps. And this is because um, those pieces are going to adhere down flat onto the inside. So again, I'm just folding them um, towards myself and onto the inside of the die and this is so when I use that little pull tab piece where my scene is stamped on it's not going to sway from side to side and it's going to stay in place when I pull um, up and down so that's really fun and now I'm going to be threading through the little die cut strips that were on the black piece and I'm just threading those through into the little die cut lines onto my scene piece at the back. So I'm just going ahead and threading those through into place and then when you pull up that's how the magic is going to be revealed. So now that that's all lined up and it's lined up between those two little flaps that I adhered earlier, I'm going to remove the other side of the adhesive and then just fold over the top piece of this die on top of itself and it's going to seal it all up into place. So here is how the die works. You just pull it up and push it down to make, usually you would do this to make the scenes change, but I really wanted it to look like a developing Polaroid. So um, I just thought that was super fun. So now I'm just lining up that frame over top and making sure it looks good and it did. So I decided to adhere the little um, pull tab piece first. So this has a score line as well that I just folded over first. I then added strips of adhesive on the inside and then I'm just going to push that 
uh, pull tab piece uh, down a little bit and then I'm going to adhere the uh, pull tab like reinforcer piece I guess um, on top. So I'm just lining it up at the bottom first and then folding it on over and this just makes it really easy to pull up and down and also it's going to act as a stopper so the magic slider doesn't go down too far as well. So, oh my gosh, I love this so, so much. It's so much fun. So now that the interactive portion is all completed, I'm going to set that off to the side and color a ton more images. So I stamped out a ton more images from the Butterfly Kisses stamp set and also O Gnome, just because I wanted a little wheelbarrow and a mushroom and some flowers. And I just went ahead and Copic colored all of those off camera and then I cut them out. So now I'm going to arrange a little bit of my scene. So I really wanted there to be like a scene on the front of this interactive portion just because I wanted those little animals to be sort of like looking at the Polaroid since they were sort of like looking that way which I thought was just really fun so and then I also wanted to add like a little scene around them as well just to make it more fitting so I'm just arranging a few of the images into place just to make sure that it's all fitting like I wanted to and it is so I just went ahead and took them off and now it's time to adhere the rest of the scene together so I I am first adhering this blue like top of frame piece so I just added a little bit of foam adhesive onto the um, magic picture changer die first just to make sure that I'm putting the adhesive in the correct places and it's not going to stop the interactive portion from working so I'm just going to adhere that down over top and then I'm going to go and take the mushroom border dies and I'm just going to use the little curved um, grassy hill from this set um, you can use any grassy border here I'm not specifically using the set for the mushroom border um, I just had it out and so I thought I would use this one instead. So I'm just going ahead and cutting that from some cilantro cardstock and I also cut it with the same um, frame as well just to make sure that I had that stitching as well. And I'm adding some quarter of an inch adhesive onto the back and adhering that into place. And I'm just going to adhere that at the very bottom of this uh, panel here. So now that all of those pieces are adhered down, it's time to arrange my scene. So I'm just adhering the bunny and the bear on either side, um, just making sure to add adhesive only on the left and the right of the frame, not on that black piece at all to make sure that the um, interactive portion still works. I'm then just adding the wheelbarrow with some of the flowers um, in them to the left hand side, just adding that with foam tape. So um, the flowers sort of like sit inside which I think is really fun and then using my glue tube and adding a few of the grassy pieces around as well just overlapping them over some of the images just to give a lot more dimension I also added some butterflies to the top with some clouds as well as the trails as well I still do have a ton of images left over but once I adhere my sentiment down um, I'm going to use them then so now I'm using Quinn's ABCs and I really just wanted to have a little die cut high so I just went ahead and cut that from pencil eraser cardstock and the eye does come together since these dies do work with a stamp set but I just cut them apart using some fine detail scissors. So I just went ahead and adhered those down using more foam tape and then I also used the fluttering buy to say sentiment white heat embossed that onto some black cardstock and I hid it into place. I then just added a few more flowers and grassy pieces around just to make the scene feel more complete as well. So that finishes up pretty much the entire panel for my card. I am just adhering onto a white card base covered in some pencil eraser cardstock just because I felt like it looked a little bit better on top of a colored cardstock rather than a white. So I think this card base is about um, five inches tall by like three and a half inches wide I believe which I think is really super fun it's a mini card it's super duper cute but it's so full of images and cuteness and I really just love this whole like developing Polaroid look I think it's kind of fun as I said earlier though it's kind of whimsical and not really too realistic but it's just super cute and I love using ties in a little bit more of a different way so thank you so much for stopping by today all of the supplies will be listed down below and over at the blog post and I'll see you all next time thank you so much